Judy Turner with Delma Cell Design and today I'm here to show you how I make a bowl cozy. Um, this is a project that um, because I'm a drapery workroom I get fabric sample books and last year I was looking for something to do with my fabric sample books. Sometimes they're quite large. This is, this is a sample book and these fabrics become discontinued. So I'm often either giving them away to um, retirement communities where they can do some fun projects um, or schools or sometimes I'm just looking for small projects that um, I can utilize um, some of these really beautiful fabrics for, for myself. So last year I was looking around for things that I could do with these fabric sample books um, and you'll see that every page is like a different pattern so you never know what you're gonna get um, but they're coordinated. They're usually coordinated in these books. Uh, so I had some fun coming up with the idea of making some bowl cozies. And a bowl cozy looks like this. It's reversible, so you pick two fabrics, one for the inside, one for the outside, and then you can always reverse it um, and flip it around. So what you do with a bowl cozy is you would put a bowl inside and this bowl um, could be filled with some warm soup or some cold ice cream in the summer. I actually use it a lot in the summer when I do have ice cream um, to keep my fingers warm. Do not put this bowl cozy in the microwave. Some people, there's a lot of blogs out there um, a lot of tutorials, a lot of YouTube videos to show you how to make these. Do not ever put these bowl cozies in the microwave. There's cotton layers in between and I can guarantee you that uh, somebody will have a microwave fire. It's never a good idea to put fabric in a microwave. So use heat up your food in the microwave first and then when it's hot Put it into the bowl cozy okay don't want any accidents so i was uh last year um this is the set that i had made and you'll see here and then the back was this fabric i live in the sea coast so i found these coral and shell fabrics to be kind of fun there's the inside and the outside. And you'll see, here's the coral again. And the shells again. So I was able to fit, to pick out coral fabrics that coordinate with shell patterns on the back. Also coordinating and kind of mix and match because I only have a limited size of the fabrics. So I put these together as one set, and this is what I use in my kitchen. So I, I made a set like this at Christmas time, and I gave it uh, away to a friend. And she didn't really know about cozies, so she thought, what the heck. Um, tried them, and this year she commissioned me for a set to give away as a gift herself. So she came over to my workroom and picked out these fabrics. These are actually for her son. So we're going to do a combination. Hopefully they're not too washed out. So sort of some paisleys. And I don't want to mix them up because i, I got to keep them in order here. And you can probably see that one. It's a pretty eye cat fabric. And that will coordinate with a paisley print. another sort of a contemporary print that is going to coordinate with another paisley print and then there's another eye cat that's going to coordinate with this print here so you'll see none of them match but they all sort of coordinate and that's the kind of the fun with this project is that you can mix and match um, and they're reversible, you can turn them inside, outside, whatever you want. So the first thing that we're going to do, and like I said, there are many tutorials um, out on YouTube. 
So pick one that you like, follow this one along. A lot of them don't have words, so I figured I would sort of talk along and give you some, some instructions as to what I'm doing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 10 inch squares. I do mine with a 10 inch square. I'm gonna cut 10 inch squares out of this fabric here. The insulation that I use is just a 100% natural cotton quilt batting. Um, you can kind of see it's pretty thin. I like this thin stuff for a lot of craft projects because it's all natural and it's thin. It doesn't have the loft like a poly batting would have. Um, this has already been marked with a 10 inch grid on it. So I'm just going to cut this out. I'll have one piece of lining with each piece of decorator fabric that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. square on one and then I'm going to use it as my pattern for the rest. So what I need to do is keep these all in order so that I know where the mates go. And I'm going to try and stack these up. I think I can do a few of these at a time. I'll make sure I keep them all with the same pair. I can cut all four of these out together.
and goes with the gray. Okay, so the next step, now I have my all my piles cut and I kept the pairs together. The next step is to take one piece of cotton batting and one piece of fabric, lay them on top together. Now, I don't do, you'll see in some of my demos, I don't do a lot of pinning, I don't do a lot of marking, um, I don't do any of that. I've been sewing for a long time and I keep things pretty simple. Um, I don't, uh, I try to try not take up too much time uh, with things that aren't really necessary. But if you need to pin and if you need to mark, then you should do that. So the next step, I'm just going to show you on these two for right now. Um, get this. And I'm going to show you with the marker. I wouldn't normally show with a marker like this. I'd probably use a pencil. But um, I'm going to do it with a marker so that you can see what I'm doing. So on some demos um, that I've seen this, this bowl cozy made, they've done some stitching diagonally. So you can do some stitching diagonally if you want. I don't do that stitching. I found that because I use these home deck fabrics that are a little bit heavier, everything seems to sort of stay in place. And personally, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of extra top stitching. Um, these fabrics, they have got some really pretty patterns and sometimes that stitching just kind of looks odd. Um, so I, I only use top stitching if I actually feel like it needs it. Um, and I've made several of these and I think these fabrics because they're heavy um, they don't really need that top stitching if you're using a, a lighter cotton weight fabric then you may want to go ahead and put in some stitching do the diagonal stitching just to kind of keep everything in place so the first thing that we're gonna do because I don't do that that other stitching is I'm gonna fold it in half like this See, folded it down. It's right side together, so the print is on the inside of this, and kind of line it up so it's nice and squared off here. Um, I don't worry too much about this batting not being even, it's not really going to affect it in the end. And I'm going to mark up, put a dot two inches up at the fold, and one inch over there, one inch from the fold going forward. Then, I think you can see this, I'm going to just draw a little line. So I'm just going to do this on my demo. When I do this at my machine, I literally will only put like a pencil dot. I'll put a pencil dot here and a pencil dot up here. And then I just put this under my machine and I just stitch those corners. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be stitching those corners. When those are done, we're going to open it up. We're going to flip it the other way. We're going to mark it the same way, two inches up, one inch over. And we're going to stitch that as well. And we're going to do it on all. I've got a set of four cozies. So I'm going to be doing this eight times, one for the tops and one for the bottoms. So I will take you over to my machine and we'll stitch up from there. Okay, here we are back at the sewing machine. And you'll see that the lines that I've stitched, I'm just gonna, or the lines that I've marked, I'm now gonna stitch on. Those are my stitch lines. So you open it back up, that was the first half, open it back up, we're going to fold it in the opposite direction, and what I found, because I like to do things quickly and without having to measure everything, I made myself a little blue triangle, that is two inches 
by one inch. So I just put it here and again I just mark with my pencil. It's pretty faint but I can see it. It's enough for me to sew. Saves a little time of having to stop and get the the ruler out to measure everything. So stitch all the way to the edge. Just make sure everything is kind of lined up as best you can. You'll notice that I don't clip my seams until the end um, because I, that's also sort of a time saving tip right there. I do all my clipping at the end so I'll clip my threads and in this case it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't really matter if we have these loose ends inside because you're never going to see it. It's not going to add to the bulk. It's not going to change the effect of of these. These are just bowl cozies, so it's not a garment where you need to worry about all those loose threads. So at this point too, if you want to go and open up into this triangle a little bit more, you can just do like, you don't need, I wouldn't go all the way to the edge, I would just do a little snip into each corner. It's because when you go straight, there's it just leaves a little bit there. Um, and that'll help it open up a little more. So I have the, the other side to do. I dropped my pencil. So again, I'm just going to mark, put my triangle down. Mark, it's pretty faint, but I can see it. You could also do this little triangle in cardboard if you wanted. Um, that would also be another quick easy template. Use an index card, use a piece of cardboard. Anytime you're doing repetitive measuring like that, it's nice to have a template. It just saves you the time of having to measure each time. Again, I'm going to open it up, right sides together. Make sure everything is kind of lined up in the corners. This is a great project where you don't have to be super accurate. It'll still work out. If you want at this point too, after you've made all these little darts, these are darts that are in the corner that help form the bowl shape. And if you wanted to at this point, you could take these over to your pressing table and press them. But uh, sometimes I do. It depends on the fabric. Sometimes I will take them over and press it. Um, putting a little bit of moisture and steam into fabric helps it relax and uh, helps it helps you manipulate it where you want it to go. So a good steam iron is well worth the investment. If your iron is too dry, you're not going to get the benefit of the steam. So you can see what the darts have done. The darts on the edges have created the bowl that we need. Now from here, all we're going to do is put the right sides together. So here's the mate for it. We're going to put right sides together and we're going to stitch around. Um, like I said, you could take this piece at this point and you could go press it if you want to, um, but I don't, I don't generally feel like I need to press it. Some fabrics I might feel like I, I would want to press. 
So what I do is I'm going to leave this side open here when I stitch for turning inside out. And then I'm going to start stitching from this little dart here and I'm going to stitch all the way around up to here and I'm going to leave this open right here. Again, you, um, you know, as I said, I don't use a ton of pins. Uh, I just find that some, I only pin when I absolutely have to. I find that pins, um, they do slow down the sewing process. They're good, uh, they're good to put a few placement pins in if you really absolutely need to. Um, but the danger with pins when you're sewing is that if you forget to take them out and your machine goes over them, uh, you can cause a lot of damage to your machine. And um, every time, <laughs> every time I hit a needle, it probably cost me about a hundred dollars to get this machine fixed or the timing reset on it. So uh, for me, it's a good reminder. Like you know, I do. You'll see, I do use pins but I don't use them unless I really have to. And on a project like this, that's more or less a craft project, uh, I, don't, I don't always feel like I need to use a pin. Okay, so on here, I'm combing up a little bit short, but it's probably because, you know, when I cut all those layers, it's not going to be 100% accurate. So I'm going to look at what that dimension is. And I'm going to set it back a little bit and I'm only if you notice I'm only sort of giving myself about an eighth to a quarter inch seam allowance and that's going to be okay um, and I'm, I'm only giving myself a very narrow seam allowance so I'm going to come back and trim that up because when we turn this inside out or right side out I should say when we turn it right side out, we're gonna we want a very narrow uh, we want a very narrow seam allowance in here because we're gonna turn it right side out and then we're gonna top stitch around the edge. So we take it from here, turn it inside out. These are pretty bulky, so just take your time and move it through. And what I didn't do is snip a little out of each corner. So I might, I'm going to try and find my corners. So there's a corner there. I'm just going to nip a little bit off, make sure it comes out. So I should have three corners to find. That was one. There's the other. And I'm just going to make sure so that it doesn't stay in. That's that corner. And there should be another corner right here. The fourth corner is going to be part of our edge. So I'm not going to worry about that one. So we turn it all right side out. And this is actually where I will use a pin. Uh, when I'm trying to pull out this corner, pins are, and I use T-pins usually. I'm a drapery workroom, so I do have some smaller, thinner dressmaker pins. But most of the time, I'm working with heavy fabrics, medium weight drapery fabrics, or upholstery fabrics, and so I use T-pins for probably 90% of what I do. Um, and this is a good use for a pin, because you can see I can kind of push it out along the seam, and I can get it turned. So this is also a good time, uh, if you were to take it to the iron, you could get a really good press out of it, and you, could, you can manipulate fabric 
much easier when it's under steam. Um, but for the purposes of demo, so I'm not gonna probably I'm not gonna iron this uh, so I don't have to move the camera. But personally, um, I would probably go back and I would iron all these. Um, and I'm but I'm gonna finish this one here, um, and then my other the other three that I'm doing I'll I'll press those in between. So here is our, if you can see, this is our open edge. And this is going to turn up on itself. And that's how it's going to close. And we're going to top stitch this corner. So this happens to be a pretty bulky fabric. And I am actually going to try, let me try and snip this corner because I don't like all this bulk in here. It's kind of fighting me. So I'm going to nip that corner just a little bit. Turn in the sort of quarter of an inch that I need. I'm just going to make sure things look pretty. put a pin in at the top. I may not have to put a pin at the top. If I can just fold it and get it under my machine, then I probably won't put a pin in. So I just want to make sure every all the raw edges are just kind of tucked in here. And I'm going to be top stitching fairly close, um, you know, like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Um, where this raw edge is, I'm going to go kind of tight to the edge so I make sure that I catch everything. So I have like a skinny foot on here and I'm just kind of going the width of my skinny foot. Just making sure everything underneath is tucked in. Make sure my corners look good. Pivot at the edges. It looks like, of course, I ran out of thread right there, which is always the case. It's always going to happen. So I'm going to change out the bobbin. If someone could ever figure out a way to put up an alarm when the bobbin thread runs out, they'd make a lot of money. I think everyone who is a sewer would be buying that. Got my bobbin started. So 
So I'm, you can't see my thread too well because I'm actually using a, a gray thread. Um, I use gray thread in a lot of the projects that I do. A lot of my home deck projects are gray thread because I find that, this is where it broke, um, I find that gray just blends with a lot of different colored fabrics and especially a lot of print fabrics. Uh, the gray is really helpful. Sometimes if it's really bulky there, uh, my thread will break, which is what happened. So here, I go back and I'm going to trim up all my loose ends. Okay, a few extra loose threads from when that thread broke. And I had to re-thread it. There we go. So here's my bowl cozy. Of course at this point I will take it and I will go um, I'll go iron it. But here's one side, here's the back side, or like I said, it's reversible, completely reversible. So you can just flip it, turn it around, and uh, have whatever side you want out. There it is. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go press these and I'll show you what the result of all four look like at the end. Hello, I'm back as promised. And here's a set of four that I was commissioned to do, the grays and the teals. Um, I think they turned out really well. And I hope my client enjoys them as much as the recipient of these gifts. Um, so there's, they're all pressed and they're all formed and they're all ready to go. And because I had so much fun making these, I decided that I would make an extra pair so I chose two more coordinating fabrics. I chose a blue and an orange. And um, I li love the paisley, love the paisley. So paisley is on the outside and florals on the back. And um, because we're trying to grow this channel, what I would like to do is to raffle these, to, to send to one of you. And what we are asking is that you subscribe to the Domicil channel, like and comment. Um, you can also dislike, that's okay. Um, I hope that you don't dislike it, but um, like our channel, like this post, share it with a friend who you think um, might enjoy making these themselves. Um, and just engage with us. We'd like to grow this channel. I'm going to be in adding more shows, more, um, more, yeah, more shows, um, over the next couple months. Um, I specialize in soft home furnishings, but I do a lot of different craft projects. I majored in fine arts, um, fine arts and fiber arts in particular. So anything that has to do with fabric and yarn, um, is generally where my interest lies and I'm looking for ideas if you there's something that you would like to see demonstrated um, I can do a little tutorial or a talk um, as an example blue and orange these colors go well together because they're complementary on the color wheel so we can certainly get into color and color theory that's going to be one of um, one of my ideas is to talk about pattern and design um, but Right now, we're just looking for some engagement. We're hoping that you can like, comment, or share um, this. And in 30 days from when this is, video is posted, in 30 days, we're going to do a drawing of everyone who was able to engage with us. And I will send you this, this set right here. Um, so I'm sorry if you're watching it after 
um, the 30 days from when this uh, originally posted, but um, I will continue to do probably giveaways and raffles as we go on. So thank you for watching and um, connect with us and I'm happy to be here and I will be connecting with you again. Bye. Mm -hmm.